morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Dan Farrar, and I'm your general manager. And to my left is Nina Yavara, our executive assistant. And we're so happy that you're all able to come here today to talk about the new uh, program that waste management has in place. And I'm very excited to be able to introduce Lori Summers. We had a meeting with Lori, it seems like this was six months ago, maybe even longer in anticipation of this program. We knew it was going to be um, quite a big change for all of us. And so we were very happy to be able to meet with you and, and, and talk with you. And, and we thank you so much for coming today. So um, perhaps you can introduce yourself, talk a little bit about who you are, and then we'll start about with the program. Sure. Oh, it is on. Great. Thank you. So my name is Lori Summers. I'm the Community and Municipal Manager for Waste Management, and I have been with the company for 37 years this year. Hold the mic closer. Closer? Is that better? Yes. Okay. So, um, so I'm an old-timer with the company. Um, so I am here to introduce the new program, and this is citywide. Um, let you know that this is really being um, rolled out in conjunction with a Senate bill in California. It's called SB 1383. And what SB 1383 is designed to do is to reduce organics going into the landfill by about 75%. And they have kind of a goal date for that, but also to reduce methane gas um, emissions. So that's the bulk of what drives this legislation and the requirement. So with Cal Recycle, who, who manages this, they also task each jurisdiction that to roll out a program to, um, to make sure that these goals are met. So the city of Oceanside is being um, governed by, the, cap, by um, the state, and then waste management as the waste hauler for Oceanside um, has been working very closely with the city of Oceanside to develop the program to make sure that it's successful. So that's what brings us here today. Um, currently, you have a recycling and landfill cart that you use. The only difference, really, for this program is instead of putting your food scraps in any of your food soil paper, when food soil paper means, you know, like your cardboard box, and if you get pizza and it's got oils and grease on it, that would be food soiled. Um, a napkin from a takeout or even in your home. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. You can, you can put paper towels in there as long as they are not like from Windex on it. You know, like if you wipe down a countertop, you can put that in there. Um, if you went and got something from um, McDonald's, let's say, and it is on in paper, as long as it's not coated in that plastic, even that paper, it's food soiled, it can go in here. So what that's going to do is going to reduce the amount of material that you'll be putting in your gray cart, and now all you're doing is shifting it over to the green cart. So what we have done to hopefully make it easy for you is, besides receiving this 35 gallon, and it is the smallest, and it should be the same size as the landfill carts that you have now. We are also providing a kitchen compost pail to every resident. And what this can be used for, you can put it under your sink, on top of your countertop, wherever you'd like to store it. But whenever you're preparing food or you're done with your meal and you have your food scraps, all you need to do is open it up here and you can scrape it in here. Now what's the nice thing in Oceanside, what we are allowing that not all cities are allowing, is that you can either line this or you can put your food scraps in a clear plastic bag before you put it in your container. And what that's gonna help with is the odors, right? And any little bugs that might be in there. So you can line this if you'd like. Now remember, it has to be clear. So to me, if you go to the grocery store and you go to the produce section and you get those clear bags, that's clear. It's not shopping bags. Like you're, you know, you buy 10 cents for a shopping bag. Not that, because it's not clear. We cannot see what material is in there. 
So all of our literature says no shopping bags or colored liners. That basically means not a hefty bag. You know, anything that's colored or that we cannot see it, that plastic does not go in. What about brown paper bags? Yes, brown paper bags are fine to put it in here. So also you could line this in a brown paper bag. Where do you get clear bags? Um, I don't want to yeah. steal from Walmart's, you know, the food section. Hey, Lori. Yeah, so do you want to make questions? questions? Yeah. You could, you well, I'll okay. remember that question. Let me get this, and then, and then I know that there's going to be lots of questions. So, uh, yeah, so then it can go in here. Where it goes from here is we will collect this in um, Elcor Zone, Agro Service, that we've had here for a long time. The material all goes there. It's going to be made into mulch and compost. And as residents of Oceanside, I know you guys don't have big yards or just have the patios, but if you need compost or mulch for your, for your own little gardens, that's available to you at no charge. So you can always go there and pick that up. And so it's kind of that full circle, right? So you put your food scraps in here, you put it out, we take it somewhere, out for service, compost mulch, it comes back to you at no charge. So that's a really good um, program here. What I, uh, so the things that can go in here, it's in your guide, it's very comprehensive. In your food, so you've got your meats, your dairies. Dairies can be eggs, it can be, you don't, just not liquids, right? So you can put the eggs, you can put bones, um, fish, uh, you know, your leftover spaghetti dinner, if there's some, anything left there, your fruits and vegetables, but also, your um, garden clippings can go in here. So you're combining them together. So if you have roses, flowers, or something in your yard, and I'm not sure what you're doing with those clippings now, you can put it in here. That actually helps with the odors as well. And you just kind of layer it out. A recommendation that we have, if you have anything in here at all, even if it's not full, I would roll it out to have it collected so that it doesn't sit there um, and create an odor, especially in the summertime, right? It gets warm and you get this. Another tip that we um, give everybody is if you have it in a plastic bag or a paper bag, put it in the refrigerator until the night before you're going to put this out and then it doesn't sit for a whole week in here. So that's another tip to kind of keep, keep your cart clean and smelling as nicely as it can and um or baking soda you know sprinkled with baking soda you foods are going to keep your smells to yourselves Party Cooper. so before i take questions i wanted to tell you a few things that are added to the programs for oceanside that you um are can can use starting january 1. i don't know how many people have used our bulk item collection where if you've had a table or a chair that is not uh, has been broken or no longer useful, or you have a, a, a computer monitor or something that it no longer works, you know, you've called us to have it picked up on your service day. In the past, it has been, you can use that service three times a year and you can have up to five items each time that you call and have it collected. We've actually just increased that. Now it's up to five times a year with five items. Not everyone needs that many, but some might. So it's just an increased service for you. Uh, what is something is that you can use? Has anyone here used our um, hazardous waste facility and made an appointment and dropped off chemicals, pools, paints, that kind of stuff? Great. That stays, and we're, we're keeping that program. But we also have a program just for seniors and those disabled that we are going to be doing some curbside, free curbside collection of that same material. Now it's very limited, so it's kind of like we're going to see how it goes if, and decide if we're going to expand it in future years, but we will do it one time a month and we will have scheduled dates for those on our website, and I did bring the number so you guys can have exclusive first rights to the phone number. 
you would call and you would schedule the appointment then. So like for January, it happens to be January 31st. I don't have all the dates in front of me. So in January, if you had items, or maybe even you and your neighbor have items and you want to, you know, put them together, you would call that number, they would explain what, um, what you have, you tell them what you have, you would, um, they'll send you a kit, and that kit basically will be a big plastic bag, it will have some labels to put on your materials to put there, you would put it by your front door or your garage, wherever the, the two of you decide is the best place to put it, and we would collect that. You would not even have to be at home. So we're limited, though, each month to 15 appointments. So if you called and for some reason in January, you wanted January, you have your items, and those 15 appointments are already taken, you can schedule for the fe a February date. But as a reminder, the, our household hazardous waste that you can actually drive to and drop it off, that remains, and that's twice a month on, on every other Saturday. Same thing, you would, you would call a different number that's in here and make an appointment and you would drive it down. But this is just an extra added service that we are providing for our seniors and disabled in Oceanside. So each individual resident will get a compost pail. If you're sharing the services now at one of the closets, right now we're, we're going to deliver two to each location, and then that's to share. So if you're bringing your food scraps and everything in here, you're just going to open it up, you're going to dump it out, or if you happen to have it in a plastic or a paper bag, you can bring it straight to here, put it in here, but that is shared. Yes. And the these carts here, uh, right now, we're out going out citywide, and all the single-family um, homes that already have green carts, they have, of course, the different sizes, we're going through, and this one has a label on it, so this tells everyone now that you can put both your green yard clippings and your yard waste together. Right now, all the carts that we had out in the, in the city all just had green waste only. So right now we're out there exchanging cartlets so that everyone has a new cart. So can you imagine the project that is going on right now? If for some reason the lid doesn't fit, we're putting a decal on it. So at the end of when we get this done, we're expecting to deliver these carts here to Oceania either the 26th or 27th of December. Okay? Not always the ideal time, but we have to get this rolled out by January. So we're, 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 we're moving these forward and um, getting these exchanges as quickly as possible so you have your containers so it starts January 1. Will these compost? So, if, so these will be delivered with your cart at your home. If you have the shed um, portion, then this will be delivered probably like at your um, gate or, or um, carport or garage, if you have them, I'm not sure which is that. Um, this will go directly to you. Okay, we're gonna open this up for questions and what we'd like to do is to use the microphone so that way we're, we are recording this uh, so everybody that was not able to attend uh, we'll be able to view that on YouTube. So we have our uh, lovely friend here, Ellen. She's going to be our Phil Donahue. She's going to run around. So if you could raise your hand if you have a question, and then uh, we'll, we'll, why don't we start here in the front then? And you've got a choice of three, Ellen. My question is, are we not required to use compostable bags? No, you are not. You do not have to use compostable bags. Just a little um, information on compostable bags. Um, they, if you use them, they need to be clear, right? Even if they're, I don't know, are they light green or something? Light green, yeah. yeah. As long as they're see-through, you can use it. Compostable bags, we still are going to be pulling them out. Because really, the plastic bag doesn't compost. So when the plastic bag comes to up to El Corazon, we're actually pulling the bag, not manually, 
pulling the bags out, ripping them open so that we have the material. So that's why we prefer it to be loose in here. But if you're going to use a bag, it'll have it be paper or, or the compostable or plastic bags. Compostable bags, basically all that means is it breaks down sooner than a regular plastic bag. They're quite expensive. Too. And they're expensive. So you know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out and buy compostable bags. I mean, I don't know the real time frame of um, how, how long a compostable bag breaks down versus another one. But if we're already pulling bags out, I wouldn't go to the extra expense to search out compostable bags. Another question here at this table? So with the green waste from cuttings from our gardens, we'll no longer have our landscaping guys picking stuff up in the front anymore, right? Is that true? Correct. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, that is going to be a change starting as soon as this program begins that we'll no longer be having the green uh, clippings being left at the corners as we've noted in our rules. So now it's going to be incumbent upon all of our homeowners to make sure that you are putting your uh, clippings, all of that, into uh, the new containers. We will not be swinging by on Fridays to pick that up. Are these containers animal proof? Like raccoons and rats and stuff, can they go? Coyotes, like open the lid up? Or? Well, if they're not doing it to your trash cart, they're not gonna be able to do it to this cart. Well, our trash carts are kept off the streets and out of sight. So um, I had to keep mine in my garage. Yeah. So the animals. Live you're gonna you're gonna place this next to your other ones. I I I, 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 I would mean that you know if the animal knocks it over or crawls up and. Yeah. But it would be so storage is I don't know if you want to address storage or where these would be. Our assumption okay. is that you would. Second question is ones. when it gets filthy. How do we clean it? Do you yes. guys exchange it, or are we going to be able to, yeah, one time, to clean it? Yeah, one time a year, at no charge, we will exchange. You can call us to exchange it. So you get one free per year. So the other tips that we gave you, of course, to put things in the bags, that will help do this. Um, I don't know like what the rate is if you have more than one exchange, but that would be a fee for small to exchange it out. But we do one. Um, right now, I'm in a single family home. I'm not, you know, in an attached one. So I'm required to keep my garbage pails in my garage. Now, can this be put outside? Can we keep this outside so our garages don't smell? Or do we still have to put it in the garage, which is going to be um, a little gross? So it's going to be the same rule that we have in our current handbook that any of those receptacles need to be out of sight as I recall reading, so the, the same would apply. You've got to have that out of sight. Okay, and just one more. Uh, you said we could use produce um, bags in that tabletop, so we can leave it in that the produce bags, tie them up, and put them in there. Yes. Because oh, okay, yes. I can do that all along. Okay, thank yeah. you. So all you're doing is if you're doing something similar now, instead of putting it in your gray landfill cart, you're going to put it in this cart. Right. Will the green bins be on the same pickup schedule as the garbage and... Yes, yeah. the exact same. Okay, thanks. Here's a question. I'm waiting for... Uh, I've noticed that our uh, green, existing green waste ones that sit out by the shed are fill up very quickly. And I don't know that there'll be enough room in one of those to take care of everybody that uses that shed. We well, we can public. definitely adjust that. Right now, we're pl we're planning on bringing two of these and picking it up one time a week. Um, but we can adjust that where it's needed. And I think that Dan had talked about making sure there was a pad or something, you know, kind of building that out so it will accommodate those carts. Thank you. Hi, I live in a situation where we have our trash in a shed, and am I to believe? that these are going to be outside with no locking mechanism on them? So what our game plan is to, each of these um, footprints for these sheds are different sizes as I've seen. 
So there are some arrangements where we are going to have to expand that footprint to the point where we have to have the, because we have now the three containers, right? We have our regular trash, we have our recycling, and then we have this. So the game plan is to keep the organics on the inside and more of the recycling, which is the dry bottles, you know, that type of thing on the outside. I think that's one of the options when we met with Dan of, of doing that. So again, you know, we try it one way, and if that doesn't work, yeah. we try. We're we're, we're 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 respect we're respecting the issue that there could be potential for uh, animals to if it's easily accessible on the outside of those sheds. So that's why we we're considering having those on the inside and. Generally, they're not going to be impacting the recycling. I mean, they're not going to go after the newspapers. Um, so that's why we are considering those on the outside. Here's a question here. Yes, this is slightly uh, off topic, not very much. Almost everything we buy now is wrapped in some kind of plastic. And although there are some guidelines about what we can put in, recycle or not, could you give us a little more guidance on that? Sure. And thank you for reminding me because one of the one of the um, new aspects of the program is so any of your what I call squishy plastics like your Ziploc bags, your dry cleaner bags, your packaging that you get food or whatever is now that has not been where we put it in the recycling because it really just jams up all our equipment. But what we have, what we are introducing in January is if you have a number of those bags together, you can consolidate them and put them in like a large plastic bag. So basically, then you would put it in your recycle, your blue one. That way when it goes across our sort line, it's a bag that we can see and we can pull that out. Now, I'm not saying that that material is going to be recycled because we have different recycling markets and markets for and commodities, you know, just like a commodity broker. Sometimes there is a market that a recycler wants those type of plastics and when that happens, we're able to pull those and sell them. But sometimes if there's too much of that material, there's no buyer for them. And when there's no buyer for that material, then all we're doing is pulling it off the line and it is going to the landfill. So I just want to be transparent with that. But yes, you can you can put those, as long as you consolidate them in one, you can put them in the recycle. I have a question on the size. Is there any chance you have a smaller container? Yeah, unfortunately not. This is our smallest one that our trucks can accommodate um, to have them picked up. Well, all right. Yeah. The other thing, I'm looking at your uh, flyer here, and you have like coffee cups and, and takeout containers, and they have plastic lining on the inside. Are they to be recycled in the organics? No, if they have, if the, if the ones that, if for the type of cups that do have a plastic lining kind of coated, those would not go in. Those would go into trash. But there are some plates and cups that don't have any kind of plastic or waxy coating. Those can go in the green cart. Thank you. You're welcome. I believe you said that the little containers for our kitchen would be left by our garage. Some of us can't see our garage. We have no idea when you're going to put it there. Couldn't they be delivered to our front door? Well, we're not allowed to go like onto the property, like open up a gate and put it at your door. So, but if there is a, if you tell us, since we have time, the HOA can tell us, you know what, we prefer to have the, the, these delivered instead of from the garage, by the gate, or whatever, we can accommodate that, but we can't just go like inside gates and put them that way. So um, it's going to be the 26th or 27th, I don't know which one yet, for December. Um, but if you have your carts, if you have a single family and it's by your curb line where you put it, that's where your 
pail is going to be. If you do not, then that's one right now. We plan to put it by your um, garage or front door. We'll figure out what that is. The question back here. Um, this won't be a solution for everyone, but we live in a single family house and um, we were able, we got permission from the architectural committee to put a removable fence by the side of our house as long as you can still get in between the houses. It hides the trash receptacles. So if anyone would like to see it, um, we live in Unit 7, or House 9. It's off of K Street, and you can remember it because my husband says we live in the dog house, K9. <laughs> What about styrofoam? Yeah, the polystyrene things, that actually is supposed to go in the trash. The only polystyrene that we do collect in the recycling, in the blue one, is it like big blocks of the polystyrene. So like if you had a TV or something like that, you can break that down and put it in the recycling. But otherwise, any of your um, to-go containers or anything like that, and the reason we don't put it into our program, because our program is a mixed recycling, it gets too dirty, and so where we need to sell it to, it's too, it's too dirty and soiled for them. So that material is actually a recyclable material, but it has to be so pristine, clean, and when it's a mixed program like curbside, it doesn't stay that way, so it does go in the trash. Do you have um, plans in the future to have a smaller garbage can that is available for pickup. So we're not going to have anything in our garbage. Yeah. I realize that right now, no. This is about the smallest. Otherwise, our truck, if we start flipping them, we're going to be flipping containers <laughs> like on the other side of the truck. <laughs> so <laughs> right now, this is the smallest that we have. Uh, in regards to the recycling plastics, is a one, is that something that goes in the recycling bin? Yes. Basically, right. any of the numbers um, that are one through seven, but to, to where, where I always make sure, that, or how I remember it, is one, it's going to be like a food or a beverage, most likely, or something that you pour. So uh, it could be your shampoo bottle, it can be your laundry detergent, right? It can be your salad dressing. Um, it can be your juices and waters. All those kind of have a pour to it. Those all tend to be numbers one through seven in rigid containers. What about uh, like a cooking container that has a clear top and a black bottom? Uh, half the time, well, one of the problems I have, I can't read those yeah. numbers. It's yeah. ridiculous how small they are. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. I don't know who ever thought of this stuff, but they sure aren't. Uh, favorable towards seniors, uh, but are those uh, clear, are they recyclable, or does it have to have that one on it? So what, what type of material, or what? Plastic. I don't, but specifically who had mentioned some kind of container though, it was black. Cookies. Black bottom and a clear top. Um, you know, like a tray of cookies, let's say. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I believe that tray does have, I don't remember the numbers, I'm not very good at those. You can go ahead and put those in. The recycling, I'm sorry. If it's a liquid or a food, do we have to wash it out before we put it in the recycle bin? Um, I would just do that so that you keep your cart clean. <laughs> but um, any, so even with any kind of our containers, you want to keep liquids out because you don't want those to, to spill or to seep out. So, but to help keep your containers clean, all you really have to do is just dump it out. When it comes to the actual recycling process, it doesn't have to be super clean because it goes through a cleaning process when it gets recycled. So same thing like if you have peanut butter, you know, scrape as much peanut butter as you want want out of, or if you, as you can, out of it, but you don't have to use water and scrub it before you put it in. Do 
Do paper towels still go in landfill, or do they now go in recycling, like if, napkins? Sure. So if you're going to use a paper towel that has any kind of cleaning agent on it, that's going to go in the landfill. But if you're just wiping down a table or, or a sink or whatever, that can go in the green because there's no chemicals on it. Are there any videos available specifically to Oceanside that show how you recycle, where the, where the, uh, the compost bin, where all these things are? Is there something available that well, shows them? Funny and if, you should say that. <laughs> and if not, would you allow someone, a civilian person who makes films, to film that and put it on YouTube? Just yesterday, we um, we just filmed it yesterday, so it's going to be probably not till January or so that it comes out. We just did a minute and a half video that basically shows someone in their kitchen chopping the vegetables, whatever, putting it here, putting it at the curb, and then we did take some footage out at El Corazon. So um, it's just really meant to be a minute and a half educational of here are the easy steps. When it comes to the actual process of it, um, you may pull up on YouTube just with those key words. There's not one that we have done that I'm aware of, um, but in the future, um, we we can we can talk about that. Yeah. Any other questions that anybody might have? I have I have a question. I'm wondering where all this stuff goes once we get in the habit of putting it in the right container. The recycling materials, when they leave here, where, where do they go? Sure, we have a what we call a materials recovery facility, which is basically you know big sort line. That is a facility that we have in Orange, Orange County. County. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the, the materials that are the green come here, stay locally here at El Corazon. Um, the, the landfill, I think the closest landfill that we go is El Sobrante, which I believe is Riverside County. Oh, okay, and yeah. about the organics, um, the green waste facility, I think everybody who lives here has experienced the smell from that facility one time or another, and it's not grossly offending, but can, some people like, what is that? Um, will putting meat products change the odor that comes out of that pile? I don't know that for sure. I do know the process that they take as soon as that material is, what I would say, dumped there. They're processing it right away. Um, they're also aerating it. Um, part of SB 1383 is actually to you know use that material so not only are we encouraging residents to pick up that material then the city um, has it at their disposal to use in their um, street mediums and stuff like that where they have planting so the process is just to keep it moving so hopefully it doesn't do there I know that they there's also across the street um, the nursery and I know sometimes some of the odor comes from there too. So you'll be able to actually make mulch out of all yes. of this as uh -huh. well as yes. compost. Yes. And that's why we really we want it to stay to clean see. because it's going to go in your gardens where you're you know, growing fruits and vegetables and you don't want a lot of plastic in there. Any other questions for Lori? So if I understand, Greasy chicken bones can go in there, yes. but bacon grease cannot. No. Okay. And what I do with bacon grease, you know, after I have enough of it, well, first of all, I, I, I use it. <laughs> but if you have other greases, I've got a coffee can that I keep in my freezer, and then when it's full and it's all solid, I'll put it in my landfill cart, like the morning of, and you can get rid of it that way. And yes, someone said the phone number, so I have the phone number for the HHW before I forget. Now, you can't call until January, but at least you guys will have it. Um, the number is 1-800-449-7587. So I'll say it again, and this is the number if you want to make an appointment to have them come to your home to pick it up. And since there are limited 
um, appointments, I would get with your neighbors and say, do you have anything, you know, so that you don't run out of appointments. What, and it's 1-800-449-7500. So we're in the process of updating our website. It's one of those things that we don't want to put it on the website too soon, because it's not January, but we still want to get the information on there plenty of time when January starts. Question over here. So we've talked about all these different types of plastic bags. How about the crinkly plastic, like I just used up a bag of um, baby um, spinach this morning? What kind of plastic bag? Sure. Yeah. So basically, if it's not, again, the hard, rigid plastic that pours one through five, all those other bags go in your trash. Trash. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the uh, same program goes all cities in California? Yes. Same. Yes. Yeah, this is a California law that it's if they pick up the program. Not every city. Uh, every city is has either already implemented or is in the process of implementing it because in 2021 is when it went into effect. Um, most had it already, put, you know, implemented. Um, so this is the last program for Ocean Tide. Ocean Tide to roll out is the residential piece, and just I know you guys don't care because you're all going to do it and do a great job. But part of our SB 13, not ours, the state's SB 1383, there's an enforcement policy on this. And so uh, there will be inspections, not only for businesses and multifamily, but once a year, um, they'll just pick some routes and they're going to be going through and they'll, what we call lid flips, right? You know, uh, but what we have our truck do it. So basically it's auditing. And if we're seeing that there are those that are not participating, now that doesn't mean that they're going to open it up and there's nothing in there they're going to get, you know, you're going to have any issues. But if you're putting out a landfill cart and they're seeing all organics in your landfill cart, then you might get a nice little note that says, please participate, you're not in compliance with the law. So all enforcement starts next year in 2024. So, um, unfortunately, you know, we're, so what we're doing now is all the education and all giving you all the tools that you can need so it would be the easiest possible, but just to let you know that there is an enforcement part of this law. I have a question when we're cleaning out our uh, cupboard to get rid of perhaps macaroni that's no good or spices we're throwing mm -hmm. away or our dog or cat food. That's all acceptable in the compost? Yes, but not in its packaging. So if you yes. had dry macaroni or even wet macaroni, it could go in there, uh, the spices, your rice, that kind of stuff, just not and the packaging. And the pet food also? Uh, yes. Now, pet food, for oh, like dry pet food, yes. Wet, I would really put it in a bag so it keeps the odors down, just because we know pet food is has a little smell to it. So, Laura, real quick, um, regarding the, uh, let's just say the macaroni that you're mm -hmm. in a cardboard box and it's, you're just, could you just throw the whole thing in there because it's cardboard as well? No. Well, let's put it this way. Technically you could because cardboard is, in a, is an organic material, right? But when it's clean, what we really want to do with that cardboard is put it in recycling so we can make new cardboard um, out of it. So, yes, cardboard and paper is accepted in here. They are organic material, but we're asking if it's clean, regular writing paper, and regular cardboard, that you put that in your recycling. But if it's soiled, greased, or whatever, just put it in here. And that reminds me of another um, enhancement to our program. Right now, um, we only accept material that is inside the cart. So for cardboard, sometimes it's hard to cut it down to fit inside your cart. Um, we will be accepting cardboard if it is within, I think it's a two by three dimension, and it's tied like with some twine or something. You can put it on the outside of your recycle cart and we will pick that up. So I know Christmas is coming in. If you have excess boxes, um, we're gonna be talking to the drivers in a couple of weeks 
So right after Christmas, it's close enough to January. Go ahead and put it out if you've got more than fits in your cart, or you can wait till the next week and put the excess cardboard inside your cart, either way. I'm already thinking about what kind of clamp I can put on there until pickup day. So the animals, right here. yeah. Um, do you have any helpful hints of anything to help keep the lid closed in case Mr. Raccoon wants to open it up? Well, I mean, you could always just put something on top of it. Now, this one right here is not closing all the way because it's new and it hasn't had enough sun to, you know, relax it a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's pretty... The, I think the only thing that would be is if, if they knocked the cart over and the cart lid opened. Otherwise, it's pretty secure on these. What about, uh, like, you know how you get those bubble wrappers that it's uh, paper on the outside and, and bubble wrap inside? And also, like, a spaghetti box that's got a clear piece of I got your cellophane, yeah. Okay, so any envelopes that have the bubble wrap in it, unfortunately, it has to go in the trash because there's no way of separating that. Any envelopes, any boxes that have just a little bit of cellophane, that's fine. That can go right in the recycling. That amount, it doesn't hurt the loads. What about Amazon bags with a label on it? Amazon bags go in the trash. They're that squishy plastic. I have a question. You know, I uh, use the English muffins. And that paper container, not the plastic uh -huh. always looks like clear and I keep thinking I should be able to recycle it rather than throw it away yes that one would be fine the, the I know which ones you're talking about that that cardboard whatever that that can go in the recycling is that pretty much true then of, of any other items um, package like that for the packaging yes but not the but not the plates and the cups and stuff because that's really coated but any of the other yeah, types right. of things like that can go in. What about uh, shredding material? Uh, I have a shredding machine and I shred all my uh, paperwork Great. and then put it in a plastic bag. Where should that go? Thank you for bringing that up because then we can give you some tips. So the actual shredded paper, um, as you can imagine, when we dump, and this comes over in a truck, it's all the little pieces that could litter. So we, we prefer it not any shredding to go in the recycling. If you're going to put it in a plastic bag, if that's the only thing that you can do, that's gonna go in the trash, unfortunately. But if you have a paper bag that you can line your shredding machine with, you, it goes into a paper bag, you can fold that paper bag, even put a staple on it or something that goes in the recycling, then the whole works are gonna get recycled. People are going to be very concerned, very confused about how much cardboard and what kind of cardboard because I see time and time again people do not break their boxes down and they'll take a huge box and put it in the recycle bin and then it takes up the whole yeah. bin. And so if those things get too filled, where is the, the organic material going to go? And if it starts spilling out, I'm just... I just think we're going to have a yeah. A so our problem. hope, our hope, and what our recommendation is, is cardboard boxes are going to stay in your recycling. The cardboard boxes are going to do in here. Is that pizza box that has all the oil and everything in it. Um, so I don't think any of the too big of boxes are going to go in this one. But it can be the same for your recycling. So that's why we would just recommend folding it, cutting it so it doesn't expand, because it will take up space. I have a question about just regular bubble wrap. When you get packages from um, Amazon, they'll have like, the box stuff with bubble wrap. Which, which container? Well, if you're putting it out at the curb, it's going to go in the trash. Really? Yeah, we can't, we can't recycle that. Any of the squishy plastics, again, we can't do that. Now, with some of that stuff, then, and sometimes even those polystyrene peanuts, sometimes the um, UPS store or the um, shipping stores will take, take it back. So you may ask them, okay. 
Uh, I don't know if all do, but some will take it, and then you could just bring it to them so they can reuse it. Yeah, but then it's still squishy plastic, and yeah. Can't the squishy plastics? I go to my grocery store, and and um, I take the Amazon. The Amazon envelope says it's recycled if you cut off the paper. So I cut off, cut off the paper label, and then I put the rest of the squishy in. Um, and bring it to my grocery store and, and recycle it. You can, you can check that. So I, I've known of some stores that no longer provide right. that some program. Do. Right. Ralph's, Ralph's does, I think, but Albertsons does yeah. not. And what they do, and, and the reason those squishy plastics can go there, is what they do is a, they, have a, they have a huge program, all the big grocery stores do, of um, they even have for the food, food that they couldn't sell. All of that, when they deliver food in the big semi-truck that they deliver, they take all of those types of things back and it goes back to one of their big distributing centers and then they can recycle it there because those bags stay clean, right? They're not in our program where it's mixed with everything else. So yes, if you have a grocery store that, that you see a container that's outside and are still accepting those, absolutely go ahead and, and bring it there. Any other questions? Well, I just want to thank you, Lori, for uh, presenting today. Let's give her a little, a little applause here. Those were great questions. So I'm glad that I can answer. And if you have any individual questions, she'll stay here for a couple more minutes. And then we will be making announcements on the website as we get closer towards the uh, distribution. So thank you very much.